Hello, my name is Eloise. This is where I was born. No, not in the field, but, well, you'll see in a moment. You see, my dad was an inventor, and once upon a time, he invented something really amazing. It made a lot of money, and we lived in a big house in the country. But the trouble was, Dad never ever invented anything else that made any more money. And then one day, Dad asked his favorite child, there's always a favorite, to help, and well, something awful happened. Well, that was seven years ago. And now we've come home to where it all started. Back home at Dark Heart Manor. Yes, 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 don't worry. I'll have the necklace. Yes, she did wear them. I'll do my best. I... So here we are then, back home. It's a shame we only come back here when something bad happens. Something bad is what sent us all away. Darling, can you get my pashmina out, please? Hi, Carl. Get mine as well, will you, Colin? Right, Eloise, have you got the keys? I'm not standing out here any longer. We're in here somewhere. Come on, Mary Poppins. They're probably hidden under the hat stand. Seem to work. So how's Colin? Oh, same as usual. Oh. Is he not coming in? He's just unpacking the waitro shopping. Waitrose? Yeah, I had the foresight to pick some things up at our local one after we'd come back from Cotswolds last night. I knew no one else would think about it, so. Come on, Eloise. Dad might have changed the locks again. I just want to get somewhere there is potentially some central heating. Colin? Pashmina? My tooth chipped. Are you being serious? Why would you think you've chipped your tooth? Tell him it's fallen out. I think I did it when I was getting out of the car. On what? Your ego? Does it feel different when you, you know, run your tongue along it? Run your tongue along it. It feels a bit jagged, but... Oh, it's all right, don't worry. It's just about these TV awards. Ha! I wondered how long it was going to take you to say the word awards. What awards? What awards? Oh, did you not read about it? In Heat. I don't read Heat. What awards are you talking about? I've got these best daytime TV presenter awards tomorrow night. Right. Is this that auction thing you do? Oh. You've seen it, have you? Well, no, but I, I think someone mentioned it. I don't watch daytime TV. Well, neither do I. I'm on it. <laughs> Dad might have fixed that. I remember Dad saying the slamming doors were caused by the restless soul of a gamekeeper walled up in the cellar for poaching. <laughs> yeah, Dad was good at not adding to hysteria. He told me that the slamming was the house protecting itself against invaders. Hmm. When were you last here? Seven years ago. Tom's, you know. You haven't been to see Dad in seven years. When did you last see Dad? Easy to point the finger, isn't it? I guess you're on telly. I'm having my old room. OK, 
Okay. Now you've got to look straight up mm -hmm. and try not to get anything on the edge of your vision. What, like trees? Now trees are right out. It's got to be sky, only sky, got it? Yep, just sky. Okay. Now picture the world as a huge ball. And you're lying on top of that ball, looking up and into space. But the world is round. Now imagine what it would be like if you were lying on the bottom of that ball, looking down into infinity. What, you mean like upside down? Yeah, absolutely. And only gravity is holding you from falling off into the bottomlessness of forever. Can you feel it? It's sort of like an optical illusion. You've got to really believe it. <laughs> That's really weird. I feel like I'm looking down. OK. Now, you've got to look straight up. Try not to get anything else in your vision. Just sky. OK. Now, if you're really good at it, you feel like you're about to fall off the planet. Oh, my God, I just felt like I was levitating. That's so wicked. That's really weird. <laughs> what happens if I really believe it? I suppose you'll just fall off into space. <laughs> <laughs> now, really concentrate on one particular bit of sky and really think hard about it being below you instead of above you. Uncle Simon, you're up late, aren't you? It is lunchtime. What? Oh. Listen, something's happened. Look, I'm up for best daytime presenter. This isn't about you. Oh, get real, you're staring. It's all about who you're with and how good she looks. And you know it. What if you do win? And I'm not wearing the most expensive diamonds. <laughs> Look, I, I can't speak right now. I've got a call from my friend. Not that stupid, boring one you told me about. No, the other one, Eloise. She's got no fashion. I've got to go. Your whole family's rubbish. Donna. Diamonds, you're saying, or I'm gone. <sighs> Hello, dear sister. What can I do for you? It's about Dad. He's... He's... He's dead. I'm sorry. Somehow, Dad, I've got a feeling that everything's going to change. Donna? Donna. 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 I don't know what you see in her. Yeah, she's awful. She's a bit rough around the edges, but she cares for me. I hate her hair. Plastic hair, can't stand it. And a noticeable tack. She's so desperate. Proper desperate. You can actually, you can actually smell the mm. desperation. You can smell it. Mm. Do you mind? I've just had this... Look, you know, as station manager, you should really be taking me to the awards, not Miss Circle of Shame. You're going to the awards? With who? Donna. 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 I know, we told him. Look, take me to the awards or lose me forever. My heart's in the right place. What, in Silicon Valley? I mean, what? Mr Jones, I'm Sally Sneed from MGTV. I was just wondering, could you spare a sec to talk to us about the awards? It'd be brilliant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any publicity is good publicity, Mr Jones. Talk about knickknacks. Knickknacks. Thank you, I'd be happy to. Cool. Great. Very first time. Okay. Hi, I'm Sally Sneed, and I'm here with Best Daytime TV Presenter nominee, Yesarian Jones. Hello, Sally. Now, the viewers at home have one burning question to ask. Yes? What will Donna be wearing to the awards? God. And uh, why are you named after a book? It's not after a book. Uh, my grandfather, Jeremiah Jones, was a pilot, and my dad, I'm sorry, but Dad's gone. 
We're all busy. We need to clear the house, sell it and move on. What do you mean, sell the house? You can't sell the house. It's Dad's life. It's our life. And this could be worth millions. Suki? Well, the way the market's looking at the moment, I think it's probably worth two mil. But then we're going to be stung for a lot of inheritance tax vultures. That's 500 grand each. 500 grand each. Look, we can't sell the house. Dad wouldn't want us to do that. It's nothing to do with Dad anymore. We didn't do enough for Dad when he was alive, so maybe now we should make more of an effort. Now he's dead. That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> 500 grand each. Half a million. Could do a lot with that. What are you expecting us to do? Open it up as a stately home? A mausoleum to a mad professor? <gasps> Please don't talk about Dad like that. You can't realistically think of keeping it on. It's going to take staff to run it and look after that massive garden, so you're just living in la-la no. land. Now, you promised you wouldn't say that. Look, I'm not a child anymore, so don't treat me like one. Girls, I... girls. I can get someone from my show to have a look at everything, see if anything has any value. Money. It's all you ever think about. What are the practicalities of what you're suggesting? Well, I can call knickknacks and we can get the good stuff taken to the studio. It'll all have to be audited and itemised. Look, no, guys, guys. Look, you've all got loads of stuff. I don't have any stuff, so we don't want to get rid of the stuff because this is our stuff. Eloquently put. Look, I, I don't have any stuff. I've got this bed and, and a weird armchair that smells, so we can't, can't just, just let, let strangers, strangers come, come in here and, and take, take all our stuff, stuff away. away. OK, cherry pick the stuff you want now. What happened seven years ago destroyed this family. It's the Why only... would anyone ever want to come back to the scene of Tom's death? It's not the scene of Tom's death. It's the only thing that's going to keep us together. Otherwise, what is it? An email every six months? If that? Come on. I've got to pack up. Let's have a really good look around the place first and see what there is. Fine. I'll order it as we go. Are we going to go together or separately? Together. Fine. didn't even talk about Dad. Death. Is it the end or a gateway to something else? I once asked Dad what happens after we die. He told me we get buried in the mud and worms eat our bodies. I guess he didn't want to tell me the truth, that most of us go to hell and burn eternally. He probably didn't want to upset me. to get into Dad's lab. No, only the front door key. I wonder where they are. There's a whole load of keys in a drawer over there. Do 
you think that maybe um, if the will's okay, then I, I might be able to turn this place into a, a hotel or a, or a hostel, maybe an artist retreat? I I'd be good at that. We could rename the house, break the curse of Dark Heart Manor once and for all. If that's what you want, I promise I'll help. Look at this. The yellow biplane's gone. Look. Oh my god, it's back over there. How? Maybe one of god. Dad's inventions. Sorry, darling. No, I was just talking to. Uh, no, not another woman. No, Eloise. My sister. The hangar. We're not allowed in there without Dad. Dad's not around to stop us from going in. I've got to go. Something feels really weird. I think Dad was low. I mean, really low. This magazine says 2004. 2004, that was the last time I was here. Me too. No, me. Why would he stop flying the plane? It, it doesn't make any sense. Poor old Tom. Old. He was 22. He died. You don't get much older than that. It should have been me that died. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, let's get inside. Don't be ridiculous. Look, wait, we need to talk about this. Not in here, I'm freezing. Look, Dad clearly hasn't set foot in here for years. Let's get inside quickly. I don't get it. Well, fine, we'll leave you here then. <gasps> wait. Wait! What now? You and me in the tree. She called you out. You have to go to the tree, it's the rules. Well, it doesn't get any smaller. <laughs> Why would it? Well, you know, when you get older, things that were big as a kid. Yeah, like wagon wheels. God, it was magical, wasn't it? It's just a place to go away from the house. It wasn't special, really. Oh. Why do you always do that? Just being practical. Beep, beep, computer. Let me say always the right thing and never the wrong thing. I'm not beep, trying to say beep, the right And thing. I am never. Angry. Beep. You asked me a question, didn't you? Beep. Did you or did you beep, not beep, ask beep. me if I thought it was magical? Beep. Yeah. And no, I didn't because I realised it's just a tree. I am a wise woman. I know everything. I realised that a beep. tree is just a tree and beep. anyone can sit on it. Just being pragmatic. Pragmatic. Somebody had to be. Burnt martyr. Again. Beep. <laughs> Look how magic this place was. Don't you remember? We were happy here. How could you all leave? Hang on. You left too? Yeah, but I was 17. I didn't have a clue what was going on. All I knew is that Tom had died, Mum had left, and Dad was going mad. Hey, don't pass any blame onto us. Guys, please don't argue. Because we were older, we could see what was going on. And had to deal with it too. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm not putting up with this. 
Me neither. This is why we left. Guys? I'm Rupert Dedlock from Dedlock and Roberts. I've come to talk about Mr. Jones's estate. I spoke to Mr. Simon Jones. Oh, Uncle Simon. Stay here. Thanks. Circling already, huh? Hello, I'm Suki, the eldest daughter. This is Colin, my husband. Hello, everyone. Uh, after the death of a person, proceedings start to execute the will and distribute any wealth and assets. Now, you may or may not know that your father did leave a will, and now that the police are satisfied that there was no foul play... What do you mean, no foul play? The uh, verdict was death by misadventure. He electrocuted himself. You didn't... You didn't know that? No. How, how could we? Uncle Simon just called me and then I called the others. Well, I thought you could have spoken to the police. Why? Just thought you would have. We didn't even get to go to the funeral. Uncle Simon took so bloody long to tell us. Funeral? There hasn't been a funeral. The body's still at the mortuary. Please, just get on with the will. We can sort the rest of this mess out later. Fine. Fine. Now, your father, Mr. John Jeremy J James Jones, had planned to leave the house to all the children uh, to be divided equally. But... But? But he was conducting some very expensive research these last seven years. The bank bailed him out several times, but it had to stop. Stop? Yes. Stop. He defaulted on several loan repayments. Loans? But Dad never borrowed any money. You mean it isn't ours? Yes. I'm sorry. The bank owns the house. He was £200,000 behind with the loan repayment. £200,000? And what are they going to do with it? Well, I think the plan is demolish the house. Demolish? There's a property developer who's had his eye on the area for quite a while now. Demolish the house? Building a shopping arcade or something. Well, we have to get our money back somehow. What's the time scale? I'm sorry, but uh, you're going to have to start moving out straight away. You've got a few days to vacate and uh, demolition. Uh, demolition commences on the 11th. Get out. Get out. Get out of my house! Look, I'm just the messenger. Yes, then sod off! <coughs> sod off, Mercury! Just sod the hell! Oh! You'll regret that! I'll have you out for assault. This is a new suit. Oh. You vulture! It. Oh. I can't believe Dad spent our house. God, he really messed up, didn't he? How could he have spent 200k? We have to get into Dad's lab. 
We need to find out what the hell we spent all our money on. Morning. Bloody long drive you got here. I should be paid by the mile to do this Can job. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. Could you uh, sign for this, please? Okay. And uh, this heavy one. Sign again, please. And uh, one more. How many more of these things are there? Um, there's actually this many. Another bloody lot. Ow! Ow! One more. Ah! Have a more for all that care. Sign. Preferably with your name this time. Sure. Thank you. Have a nice day. You got the necklace? Yes, darling. It better be the one that Posh had. Buck said that he could get me Kylie's tiara from... Yeah, well, I'm sure Buck can do a lot of things. But I've got the diamonds you wanted. OK, good. See you tomorrow. What's that all about? I thought I saw Tom. Tom? What did he look like? Well, you know, like Tom. Tom then or Tom now? That's a stupid question. Tom then, alive Tom. And he was all... A what? We had a focus. Blurry. I, I couldn't really see him properly. He... But he walked like Tom. Are you OK, Yoss? You look a tad peaky. Just had a bit of a shock, that's all. Electric? No, he, he just thought he saw someone in the garden. Is anyone seen the sodding key for Dad's lap? 
What's this clan meeting for? Thought I saw someone. Looked like Tom. I don't think this is funny. I'm not trying to be funny. Just the house stirring up memories. Why do you have to be so logical? Because without logical people, the world wouldn't function. This family wouldn't function. This family doesn't function. It could have been a ghost. Tom's ghost. No more talk of ghosts and poor old Tom. I don't like it. Oh, forget it. I've got to make some calls. I'm going to look for the key. See what else I can find. Mum and now Dad. I mean, if someone doesn't make any bloody decisions, then what? It's OK, Sue. No, it's always worry. been me, the sensible one, sorting everything out, never having any fun. Well, maybe we can have a nice few days here, say goodbye to your dad. God. This house, this wretched house, it just makes me feel like I'm a failure. Suki. No, no, Eloise has failed in love and work and, well, everything. Yoss will never be the TV god he so wants and Mum died and Dad died and Tom... My little brother, he, he failed to have an existence, and I failed to have a family. Shaky. Jesus, what a bunch of failures we've turned out to be. It's supposed to be a bloody holiday. It's so typical of Dad, he's bloody selfish. Even after death, his stupid inventions buggering everything up. It was his inventions that bought the house in the first place. For God's sake, Colin, you're as bad as Eloise. Come on then, go and check the pantry. I can't do it on my own. I've got you a van. One of Nick Max Productions' assistants will drive it around on Sunday because everyone has to be back at work on Monday, apart from you, of course. How big is it? Oh, thank you, your sir, and it's very kind of you to sort a of van out for me. Lovely. You are a nice brother. How big is it? Like a transit van, not a lorry. Eloise, would you like me to put you together a basic starter kit for someone living on their own, you know, cooking things? I've been eating my own food since I was 17. And you're still not dead. So I'm simply asking, would you like me to pick you out a frying pan and some utensils? I'd like one of those forks that's a spoon. A spork? Hmm. You'll have to go to Millet's for that. I'll be in the kitchen. I'm going to go upstairs and see if I can find something useful. Dad once said, a home is only a home because of its ghosts who are the echoes of people, snag behind like wool on a nail. Without them, it's just a house. He also said, treat each day as your last, because one day, you'll be right. What are we going to do with all this stuff, Colin? eBay. <sighs> Not helpful, Cole. I actually don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> Most of stuff is rubbish. Why keep it? Memories? This was Mum's. I don't know. It's just not how it should end. It isn't the end. You get to choose when the chapter ends. Do you want a hand with anything? Yeah, actually. Uh, can you take this chair down to the hall for me? Careful, though, I think it might be antique -y. Oh, is it? Oh, I don't mean of any value. I just mean it's old. I think I've seen one of these on the show. I like it. It's going to be my reading chair. Yeah, well, um, I think I might like to leave this here, you know, if, if, if it doesn't fit in the van, perhaps. Do you want it? Well, it's something I could... Uh... Do you want it? Well, if it doesn't fit in the Do van... Do you want it? Yes, I would quite like it, yes. What for? We've, uh we're doing a chair week on uh, knickknacks. <gasps> chair week? But I want it. 
and I do not want to hear about your weird, sordid chair week. I actually want to sit on it. Well, could I just borrow it, then bring it back after no! the show? No! You said you didn't want any of this chuffing tat. So I'm having it. Sorry, I'd better get this. <laughs> Do you remember that one? Why did you put the phone down on me? <gasps> Do you remember this CD? You want to come over here? I remember that one. Do you remember this call? Yes, I do. Unfortunately. <laughs> Can you just give us a bit of time? That was my favourite song. Let it go, like... Do you remember the words? Oh, the words? Um, I used to play this all the time. I even in my sleep I used to remember this classic. Da -da 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 -da. The bravest animals in this land... Well, Captain Beaky and, and his band. band. There's Timitoad. Timitoad. Uh, Red 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 Oh, Artful Owl and Artful Batty Owl, Bat. God, you said nightmares about hissing, Sid. <laughs> What's the noise? Just singing. Do you remember this? We used to play it all the time. We were so annoying. We did. <clears throat> I'm going to get a CD from the car. <sighs> Hello? Hello? I say hello? Hello? That's what I found. Dad's lab. Wow. father was working on. Come on, it was probably some new type of milk container or maybe sellotape that doesn't tear your lip off when you try and bite it in two. Well, I don't like it. It gives me the willies. Oh, my God. Look. Oh, dear. It's, uh, it's all plugged in. Oh, look, it's Dad. Password, please. Password. Any ideas? Snowy. Snowy? Yeah, Tintin and Snowy. Okay. Yes, it's Tintin and Snowy. OK, does it have a number, then? Oh, um, Snowy 3 is number 3. Thank you. Huh. How did you know that? It wasn't just your dad. Huh. It says there's a component missing. What does it look like? How the hell should I know you know? Look, I've got to keep an eye on the dinner. Let me know if you see anything interesting. So this is what Dad spent all our inheritance on. What the hell? It looks like some sort of... Oh. It's Mum. What were you doing at the special tree? 
I saw a man. Suki, what do you mean you saw a man? There was a man. It was weird. He, he looked sort of out of focus. Thought I'd leave Elle to get on with it. You right, Cole? Look like you've seen a ghost. Well done. Very well done. What did I do? Colin's got a bit of a problem with the paranormal. The paranormal? Yeah, there was an incident at college. It upset him. Oh, yeah. Well, I like the sound of an incident. Oh, God, if you could get your mind out of the gutter for just one second, it would make all our lives so much better. I'm hurt by that remark. Anyway, tell me of this incident. I remember at college, Colin tried to make a bit of money by faking some ghost photos. Well, like, what, like Darren Brown? Fraudulent mediums and all that bollock? Sort of. He and a friend did it, and they made a bit of money. Only Colin thought his mate Carl was doing the photos. But he wasn't. Oh, sorry, I don't follow you. Carl wasn't making the pictures. Colin was. Cole was making the pictures? Yes. Without knowing it. When he found out, he had a bit of a panic attack and... Now he thinks he's a psychic photographer. <laughs> Colin. Our uh, Cole. Psychic. I knew I shouldn't have told you. Look, he gets upset about it. Why is he always taking photos, then? He won't take photos of people, only things. Oh, that's brilliant. Just when you think you've worked somebody out. Look, if you ever... Tell Colin that I told you. I will cut your balls off. Dad once told me he was writing a book about anti-gravity. He said it was impossible to put down. And then I saw a picture of Tom, and it all began to make sense. Savoury mints, keeping it simple. You're not vegetarian at the moment, are you, Eloise? Well, as we're all here in this house, I propose a toast to Mum, to Dad, to Dead Tom. I do wish you wouldn't say that. Don't call him Dead Tom, Kate. Okay. Poor Tom then. That's better. Much better. To pull Tom. Tom. <coughs> what? Means I liked it. Should be pleased. Someone's out there. until he goes away. Haven't seen you since our wedding. Is it that long? Can you remember shagging my bridesmaid? Suki, I am deeply hurt. That was an accident. Come on, be nice. I bought chocolates and booze. <laughs> yes, sir. My little tosser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. What have we got here? Hmm? Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, yum, yum. Pig's bum. 
Okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. To my brother James. To, to dad. dad. Oh, very nice. Mm. So, uh, where have you been anyway, Simon? Uh, been travelling. A lot of work overseas. Oh, yeah? Like where? Well, I went to Paris, which was beautiful. Amsterdam, which was beautiful. Munich, which was beautiful. Warsaw. Which was depressing. You like Warsaw. Uh huh. Very funny. And now I'm back, just like you. And the house needs sourcing. Forty years of secrets here. Maybe you and me tomorrow we could relive the old times, yeah? Go back up the, uh, the special tree. Why is it the special tree anyway? I mean, there's hundreds. Because Dad put a seat in it and we could see the house and not be seen from the house. No, that's not why it's the special tree. It's because when you're in the tree, you feel something special. Something... Something magic. The first time that I went up there, I felt this thing brush against my face. It was sort of like a, a butterfly wing, but but bigger. Oh, what, like a leaf on a branch? No, like a butterfly wing, but bigger. And then I saw something and it was sort of small and quite, and quite squirrely. What, like a squirrel? No, not like a squirrel. I saw, I really thought I saw something. What, well, at the end of the story, I mean, you really thought you saw something? No, because I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story because Suki's just going to ruin it. Well, I want to hear more about the tree. The special tree. Hey, eh? Carry on, Elle. OK, well... When I told Dad about the butterfly wing against my face, he built me a fairy trap. Oh, it was such a load of old nonsense. Jealousy? Hardly. I mean, she was about ten. Yes, I was ten, thank you. But I mean, come on. Why anything then? Why Father Christmas? What, why the Tooth Fairy? Why eat ice cream? Why don't you sit in the dark, eating bread and butter and banging your head against a brick wall? You're just being obtuse. Why even imagine anything? Why read a book? Why don't you just burn all the books? Ding, ding, round two. Ten is far too old for a fairy trap. Dad knew that, and there's no such thing as fairies. One just died. Well, I believed him then. <laughs> he made me a fairy trap because he knew that I wanted one. He could have got me something like a Barbie, which was real, but rubbish. He got, made me something I would want. Well, you and he got better than me and he. Mm, me and he, what's with the grammar? Oh, sorry, sword and off. Ladies. That's just typical of Dad, Liv living in a fantasy world populated by fairies. It's just building up hopes and dreams when ultimately they're going to be dashed. I'm not a sodding schizophrenic. Unless you're really mentally disturbed, you get over that stuff. So what happened to the fairy trap? Well, I thought I'd set it really late at night before I went to bed. And one day, Tom and I woke up and we went down to the fairy trap and... and there was a fairy trapped in the trap and Dad set her free. I remember seeing her fly off. It was amazing. Well, I never saw anything like that. Well, maybe you were too busy not believing in the unbelievable. I only went up the tree to get away from you lot. You spoil the tree, Miss Sour Face. He loved you, you know. Killed him when Tom died. Killed him even more when each one of you left. Do you know what he was working on? 
No, but it was complicated and expensive. Something, something. Something what? Something bad. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Some of those components cost a fortune. He keeps talking about crossing the void and jumping space time and stuff like that. Oh, that was into all kinds of stuff. Space travel, parallel universes, time travel, alternative dimensions. Time travel? You don't think... No. Dad was working on a time machine. To go back and save Tom before... Before he killed him. I think that's just stupid. I mean, listen to yourselves. Time travel? You've been watching too much Doctor Who. I quite like the new Doctor. What do you think? Well, well it's all right. Tom Baker is the best. Oh, you have to admit, Tennant ten was excellent. Yeah, I really loved the gay Dalek episode. Dad wasn't working on a time machine. What? He wasn't working on a time machine, it says here. He was working on a machine to get to the dead world. He was trying to find out where you go when you die. He was trying to get to the afterlife. Trick or treat. What? Trick or treat. But it isn't even Halloween. It's not Halloween. Mum said we can't go out dressed like this on Halloween. And now it isn't Halloween. So we're dressed like this, okay? Trick or treat. Well, we haven't got any sweets. It's okay. Oi, mister, I need that bloke off the telly. Why, yes. My gran likes you. Sort off your little shits. Who was that? Nothing, just a... just a fan. So, who was it? It was the Grim Reaper. That's not important. What have you got there? Component 63702. I think this is the missing part for Dad's computer. Dad must have ordered it before he died, weeks ago, and it's only just arrived. Now we can finish the machine. Okay. You take the study for any other notebooks. Suki, put the kettle on. Look at this. do that if I was you. I did warn you. He never did get it earthed properly. I did tell him. I, are you really? Yes, darling, it's me. But you're... Go on. Say it. No. I'm dead, I know. Your dad was a very clever man. What did Dad do? Your dad, dad invented, invented a machine for speaking, speaking to the dead. He wanted, wanted to, talk to talk to Tom to say sorry. sorry. Oh, bloody hell. What do I do? Those little trick-or-treaters have slashed Uncle Simon's tires. He's out there now with Colin. They're not happy. Suki, you need to see this. Anne? Well, 
Well, I thought Dad was working on some sort of time machine, you know, like what we discussed at supper, and and I thought maybe he was going a little bit mental, and I was looking at everything, and it was so confusing, and then and then I looked at this bell jar. It looks like a lava lamp to me. And no, that is a lava lamp. This is a beacon. No. And Grandad's face appeared out of nowhere. Right, well, you've got something serious to say. Oh, for one second, open your tiny mind! I thought you were actually going to say something important, but oh. you're now you're talking bollocks. She's telling the truth. Oh, oh, it's typical of you two ganging up on me, trying to make me look stupid. Dad made a machine for talking to the dead. Nonsense. Look, I was sitting here, and, and, and I pressed this button, and touched this, and then a spark flew. And Grandad was talking to me, and he was like, oh, hey, Eloise, how's it going? Grandad never spoke like that. <sighs> Maybe not to you. He always spoke to me like that. It's got to be a special effect. I mean, Dad's just transferred some old cine films and made it into a little screen or something. <gasps> Dad never filmed Grandad. I mean, it's just like a mini IMAX. An IMAX? Yeah, I mean, it's a circular thing. In a jar. An IMAX in a jar. Yeah, easily up. I, mean, I don't understand how whizzy whizzy things go up in the sky and land down in a mobile phone, but why don't why can't it be something like that? Or, or a living will thing. Why don't you just show up? Turn it on. Of it's just a screen. Honey. Mm. Look, I swear to you. Telling the truth because it scared me to death. See? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's a little mini cine film with Grandad. Hello, Hello, you lot. Oh my god. God, it's it wonderful, wonderful to see all four, four of you again. again. And Suki, love. Kids, Kids yet? yet? Any, Any great, great grandchildren? No, no, not yet. We've Colin and I have been thinking about it, but we... Jesus, I'm talking to a jar. Eloise. Any, Any boys I should know about? It's a long story, Grandad. Maybe we could have a, a drink and a smoke together. I, I haven't had a cigarette in years. Well, I, I could give you some. I've got some back in my room. Stop. That's ridiculous. You can't talk back to him and give him things. He's a bloody hologram or something. I oh got it was nice to talk to, talk to someone. someone. Being dead. He's hellish. He's talking to us. It's a, it's a recording. That's a nice... Oh, Jesus Christ! That colour really goes with your jumper. No, I... Well, he hasn't like, lost his sense of humour. I don't humor. understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. No, 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 I don't understand it. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. that for? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Get him back. Get him back. Now, I don't think we should mention this to Simon or Colin. OK. See all the little bastards. What's wrong with the lights? Blown a fuse. I'll fix them. Yes, you do that. I'll do that. Colin will do that. I'll do that, then. Something weird, though. Mum's bracelet. All the diamonds are gone. Uh, maybe your dad was using the diamonds in his machine. Weird and weirder. Sometimes I feel my life is an open book.
but it's very poorly written and I die in the end. I'm hearing voices. Oh dear. <sighs> you know I'm just getting the hell out of me! Don't you think we should try and have a laugh about all this? Um, no! Why don't you just sod off? <sighs> Oh, come on! What's he up to? What's he looking for? <sighs> Cheers. <laughs> you won't be sorry you asked me to come. I didn't ask you to come. Then you won't be sorry then, will you? <laughs> I'm thinking about Mum. I've been thinking it's okay to miss her now. I mean, to forgive her. Think of her as mum again. I just want to remember the fun stuff. Like the, uh, like the pond incident. <laughs> oh, God, the pond. That was wonderful. Dad! What? Did you hear that? Hear what? It sounded like Dad. Dad! Dad, where are you? Stop it! Tom! Don't leave me. What are you doing? Jesus. <laughs> Eloise. <laughs> you scared me. What are you doing? Ah, oh, I couldn't sleep. You know, just, uh, just looking around. What are you doing with Dad's stuff? He was my brother. I miss him too. He borrowed a lot of money from me. I just. Wanted to find out what he spent it on. Well, I've been going through all the files. It shouldn't take me more than a day or two to figure out what's been going on. You know, it's the little battlefields that leave the biggest scars. Small rooms. Bedrooms. Misunderstandings. Like your father killing your brother? Yeah. I know what you mean.
Night, niece. Night, uncle. Hi, I'm Sally Sneed, and I'm here with Best Daytime TV Presenter nominee, Roger Laszlo Smith. You've got one of the best jobs. How do you describe, like, getting up for work? How do you feel every day? Tired. Tired? Yeah, if I have to be up at 4.30 every morning, it's forget that. Well, it's not all I planned, you know. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't my chosen career path. Well, is it nice to be nominated for something that you don't really want to do? Yes, it's very nice, sorry. I, it's a huge honour. It's an honour, yes. Mm. Yes, uh, I, know, I would love to win the award just... Morning, Steve, head. Where is everyone? Gone to inspect the special tree. Well, I, I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, yes. You're my favourite. Um, OK, uh, thank you so much and best of luck and I shall see you later and your lovely wife. Yes, and, yes, uh, we'll be on the red carpet. The carpet. We'll be taking... I, uh, I had a weird dream last night. Do you mind? I'm trying to watch the end of this programme. I know the girl in it. Oh, excuse me, I'm sure. Wouldn't want to interrupt your precious yeah. programming. I'll just stand here and not... No, I shan't make another sound. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, dear. Maybe Yasarian might actually win. It's Buck. He's really fit. Thank you so much, Buck, for taking some time out and sparing minutes before your busy day. All that stuff that happened last night and you're just watching bollocks TV. Are you excited? Are you nervous about later on? Uh, I'm very rarely getting nervous. Look, I shall stay here. Perfectly still. Shan't say another word. Yasarian Jones, are we worried? Is he something to worry about? Well, Yasarian is all I've got to worry about. I haven't got a problem. Oh, I see, I see. Fighting talk, we like that man with confidence. Now, what I really want to know is that will you be bringing special ladies or someone in your life? Do I stand a chance? So, you know, we all bring a special. Right, it's I just that last night we discovered a telephone that could talk to the dead. I think it might be rather important. Uh, never mind, I'm voting on you anyway. All right, well, I'll see you later. I'm sure you'll look It could make us a really, really lot of money. Best of luck, good luck, buck. <laughs> It rhymes. I know. <laughs> it rhymes. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We'll do that. Let's go check it out. Can you get him back? Yeah, who back? Uh, Elvis. Elvis. It's a radio. Dad built it. We we just got it working again. And heard Elvis. And heard Elvis. But it doesn't matter now because Suki broke it, so it's buggered. <sighs> Elvis. You know, I might have a better idea what your dad was working on than you have. We should all pool our ideas and see what we come up with. Hmm? Well, what does that do? That, well, um, that, I, um, well, I don't know. Look, I know your dad was using diamonds as capacitors on a crystalline synthetic diamond. It's the highest thermal conductivity of any known solid at room temperature. How do you know that? Your dad told me. I thought diamonds were forever. Diamonds are definitely not forever, Shirley Bassey. Look, <laughs> I know your dad was, was pissing his money away there. I didn't know he was doing it on such a grand scale. And even using your mum's jewellery. <laughs> Unc, mm. why don't you go and grab yourself a box and help yourself to anything you like? Hmm? We're going to be ages on this. What? Really, Mr. What? Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> we need a diamond to get the machine working again. Suki's engagement ring. Suki's engagement ring. Absolutely not. No way. Look, it won't get ruined, we just need to borrow it. This is ridiculous. Talking to spirits. We can't find out if it really was Grandad because... because you broke the machine. <laughs> if it was Grandad. Grandad said it was nice to see all four of us. It, 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 it wasn't Grandad. When it comes to psychic stuff, I think it's all utter bollocks. But even I think something very weird is going on. Yes, thank you, Yoss. Grandad said four of us. I assumed he meant Colin, but Colin wasn't in the room. There was one, me. And me, that's two. And of course me, three. And me, four. So that's three. Hello, and me, four.
Suki, we're leaving right now. Colin, what's wrong? Are you coming or not? Colin? Yes or no? Colin! Yes or no? What's Colin, I'd have to pack. Well, there's a Waitrose shopping and... Fuck Waitrose! I'm leaving now! Colin! really captured my spirit there. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a good one of me. It's Tom. I want to see some colour in my cheeks instead of maggots. He's here. With us now. I have been trying to tell you guys. I see live people. They're everywhere. Suki. Suki. We need to speak to Grandad again. We need to find out what the hell Dad did to Tom. He made a machine. It sucked my soul from the dead world and trapped it here and sucked his soul into the dead world. It's quite simple, really. It's your slutty girlfriend. <laughs> Hi, sexy. I'm Donna with two N's. Hi, I'm Paul with two P's. Oh, Suki, don't be like that. Oh, it's OK. Lots of girls are jealous of me until they get to know me. Fancy a drink, darling? Gasping for a Coke Zero. Trying to get that picture off the wall and the bloody thing fell on my head. I was looking for something, you know, keep the swelling down. All I could find was this frozen hot cross bun. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Simon, but you can call me Si. <laughs> um, could you help me? I, I, this thing, it's it stuck on my head. Not you, you pillock. Come here, I'll sort you out. Thank you. Mm. What's bitten her? I don't think she wants me to go. Well, it's not really any of her business, is it? Oh. 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 Yeah, oh, that's... That's... Oh, God, that's... That's so much better. Thank you. <laughs> Was she always this stroppy sigh? No, well, you know, she had problems as a child. She was, was a bedwetter. <laughs> Do you think it, if I take a picture, that Tom will be there? Tom? If you're here, will you let us know? I'd love to, Ralph. I'm sorry, Al. 
I miss you so much. I wish I could be with you. I don't get it. We know he's here. Nothing. It won't work. Colin's not here. Colin. He's the link. He made the pictures possible. He's, he's a, a psychic, psychic photographer. photographer. And wishes he wasn't. We've got to get a move on. It's getting late. Yeah, I've got some, uh, some stuff to do. What stuff? Well, you know, family stuff. Family stuff? Babe, we've been planning this for months. It's going to be sodding amazing. Come on, this was meant to be our romantic night together. Just the two of us on TV. We can watch it on TV here. OK, please don't ever speak to me like that ever again. OK, so you're having a spaz moment. So I'm going to give you half an hour to calm down, yeah? Then we are going to these sodding awards. How important are you and I? You're getting all... All what? You know, I thought we were going out on the town, getting in magazines, having loads of fun. It is fun, isn't it? It is fun, yeah, but I'm sure there's room for other things. You mean you want me to have kids and be fat? Well, not fat particularly. You mean you want to ruin my career before it's even started? You are so frigging selfish. Oh. No! This was supposed to be our night to finally get the sodding exposure we've been dreaming of our whole lives. Don't pretend this doesn't mean stuff to you. Come on. What? You're giving me the Gucci glasses? Serious? Sweet! <laughs> I'll give you half an hour, right, babe? This a connection. Feels a bit weak. But we put a new diamond in. I don't think it's a very good one. Look, Grandad. We know Tom's here. He was ghost anyway. Yeah. I was I going to tell you, you, but someone, someone unplugged, unplugged me. me. Your, Your father, father was, was trying, trying to, to find Tom's soul, so, so he, he could say sorry. sorry. But it, it went, went wrong. wrong. Your dad's machine broke. It sucked, sucked his soul into, into the, the dead, dead world, killing him. And sucked Tom into this world, like an exchange. When your dad found me, I thought he'd been looking for me. But no, it was just a wrong number. A wrong, wrong number. number. Missing digit in the celestial DNA frigging dialing code. Being here is, is unimaginable. I don't want to be here anymore. So now we need to get your dad so. Out of here. Send, Send both, both Tom, Tom and, and your dad, dad off to, to paradise. paradise. Or dad will be stuck, stuck here forever. forever. Tom, Tom will wander the earth as a lost soul. soul. For all eternity. Prove you're my granddad. You, you buried snowy by, by a special, special tree. tree. I have. Can we speak to dad? No, it's, it's not, not tuned in for him. It's tuned. What about God? What's, What's God, God got to do with it? Uh, you're dead. Have you met God yet? Seems like a popular thing for dead people to want to do. I'm in a different place, darling. You need to get a move on and get your dad, Tom, to meet up with your mum. Why are you there? Why aren't you in heaven? Because I, I killed, killed you, you Mum. What are you talking about? She took an overdose. It was depression. Yes. But who, who gave, gave her pills? pills? She was so sad. sad. I thought I was helping, helping but it didn't seem to work out that way. way. You said we were running out of time. Once, Once the machine is taken apart, no one will ever be able to get it working again. If you don't get Dad and Tom 
to heaven with man. Now they will be lost in darkness for all eternity. But why is Tom there? He hasn't done anything wrong. Dad's stupid machine sent Tom to the wrong place. How do you know that? It's all in here. The connections going. What do we need to do? Find the pieces done. Find the program. Send them off to paradise. What are we going to do now? We need to get Dad out of the dead world. I can help. What? I want to show you something. the awards. I'm going to put the kettle on. Have a think. Good idea. Asshole. They hung up. Who? Taxi. Got to go now. I thought you were going with yours. Uh, he's not coming. I'm just gonna go. Why would you go on your own? Um, it's his award. He said he's wanted to do family stuff, like there was something to sort out or something. What's that in your bag? What? Let me see. So, Eloise, you seeing anyone? Um, no. He couldn't get his act together. Boys, huh? Wanting the fun, but not the commitment. What does Yoss see in you? Pardon? Well, generally he goes for hot girls. Dim, granted, but hot. You're not really his type. He doesn't generally go for cheap looking slags. I excuse me? Oh, I said slag. You better shut your mouth. Well, that's what you are, isn't it? Cheap looking little dirty slag who needs to sleep away to the top because she has no discernible talent of her own. You take it back. No. Literal. Look, I want to fight you. Just give us back what's ours. I'm going to the awards and I am taking the diamond. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Get in! 
Told you she was no good. Thanks. So Dad and Tom are eternally bollocks then. <laughs> Find out, out which, which programming, programming it needs to, to run, run it. it. How do we do that? You've, You've got, got to, to reach you, the beacon, beacon to your dad. He, he tried, tried to get, get to Tom, Tom but, but got, got me. It didn't, didn't work. work. Not, Not enough, enough power. power. Takes, Takes a huge, huge amount of power to swap, to swap a soul, soul from another, another dimension. dimension. House feels different. Do you feel that? Less sad. It's like my ears are popped. My headache's gone. I think Tom's gone too. Bugger. <laughs> you wouldn't get me in one of those. Thank you, Bob. <sighs> I should be there, being interviewed. Instead, I'm here. I'm on the red carpet. Let's see who you can speak to. We've got here Kazarian's girlfriend, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hello, hello, oh, Sally. Hi. Look like you've had a bit of an accident. You've been uh, Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not here with Kazarian? Oh, oh, sorry, excuse me. What? Hi, but, but, uh, Sally Speed. Hey, MGC, you, you look absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. I didn't tell me you're bringing a lovely lady. Who's the beautiful woman? It's my girlfriend, Victoria. Hi, I'm Victoria. I love your work. You look fantastic. A uh, cheeky question, are those diamonds? Yes, yes these yeah. are diamonds. Yeah. Listen to me. <laughs> hey, girls, can we calm down here? Yeah. Shut up, this is my moment. Just fuck her off. Just um, quick. Hey. Wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Hi, I'm Victoria, Buck Darrington's girlfriend. He's going to win tonight. It's my girl. Get off me! Time to go. Get your hands off me! No! Okay. This is my night! No! Okay, let's go. go! I'll call you! Okay, okay, so back to Keith and lovely Linda for your awards. Oh, uh, thank you, Sally. Uh, welcome, one and all, to the Daytime Television Awards. It's absolutely great to be here. <laughs> anyway, let's get the nominees for Best Daytime Presenter. And those nominees are... 
Buck Darrenson for Good Morning London. Roger Laszlo Smith for Breakfast with Roger. And Eusarian Jones for Knickknacks TV. What's the raincoat? The black belt. Here's the moment you've all been waiting for. The winner is. Dean Pomplet, please, Linda. <laughs> the winner is Roger Laszlo Smith for Breakfast with Roger. Hope you come, Roger. <laughs> Round of applause, everybody, please. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hello. I didn't think I was going to win, but otherwise I wouldn't have had so much to drink. Daytime television is rubbish. People shouldn't watch telly for breakfast. They should read a paper or listen to the radio or do something sensible. So, if you're watching this, then don't watch breakfast telly. But if you're watching this and you're watching me, please give me a job. It was a rubbish award anyway. And no one will notice that three diamonds were missing? And they were insured. No one will question what happened when there were three million witnesses. Did that bastard solicitor Deadlock tell us Dad owed? Two hundred grand. doing that I'm sorry I killed you it's okay Dad it's okay you look wonderful. Oh, it's good to see you. I've missed you. See you too, Dad. Come on. Up on. It's time to get going. Where are we going? Paradise. Paradise. Sure. You'll like it there. Yeah. What's it like, then, this paradise of yours? They say it's all right. Everybody's happy there all the time. Or at least to the end of the universe. Mum's there. She's waiting for you. Mum's there? Yeah. Can't wait to see you.
And that was the end of Dark Heart Manor. Yes, it's yet another knick-knack. Uh, this one is uh, kind of a china teapot. It's quite flash. Uh, it's Ming. The Merciless, not the... Uh, um, yes, it's a teapot. You can put water in it. Boiling water normally I put in it. Uh, put tea in it. You can get tea from anywhere. India, China. Shops mainly, that's where I go. I went to India once. Not for the tea, I just went to India. It's got a spout. Uh, it's got a kind of a, a handly thing. It's got a lid, which you can... Uh, it doesn't actually fit. It's from somewhere else. Put it in there. Um, and you can do that, and it stops the tea falling out. It's probably worth at least 24, maybe 25 pence. Um, yeah, um, I've seen several of these before. Um, this isn't the best one. Who made it? It was made by Timothy Dalton. Oh no, Royal Dalton, sorry. Um, he collects them, uh, Timothy. Personal friend of mine, actually. What can I say? It's got, um, it's got a lid. You probably put some sugar in that or snuff out a candle, maybe. Um, not really much more I can say about it, really. Holes in the lid. Anyone's interested? Well, not. You might be. Seeing the way you look at it, you want it, don't you? Is it the spout? Yeah, well, it can make noises as well. You know, I said it was worth 25 pence. Excuse me.